project folder over here, but there's loads of ways that you can categorize your footage, search through footage, you can view them in different ways. You have a little view icon, just like the one we had in the source browser, where I can just click on it and it puts it into different modes and there's all sorts of other information and you can color grade them, all sorts of stuff. What I wanna do is take a few of these and throw them onto the timeline. This particular set of shots, not a particularly brilliant set of filming, but then one of the ideas is we wanted something that didn't look that good, so we'd have to do some work with it. That's my excuse anyway. Anyway, what this is, is a small conversation between me and Ringo. We both work here at DVC. Ringo's one of the great technical guys that we have. And it's a little conversation we have about editing ABCHD footage. It consists of me sitting down, Ringo comes in, we say a few things, and then we say goodbye. So it's a very simple little edit. I want to start off by putting the wide shot at the start of the timeline. So I'm just going to take it, double click on it, and put it up here in the player window. So I can have a look at it before I put it onto the timeline. So I double click on it and it puts it up here. The next thing I do is I want to look at it. Now there's loads of ways of doing it. One of the simplest ways is you can press on the play button and it will play it. There's keyboard shortcuts for everything in Edia. So if you learn keyboard shortcuts, then you'll edit a lot faster. If you don't learn them, you'll still be able to edit. So it's not the end of the world, but it's nice to learn them because you can edit a lot faster. And things like the keyboard shortcut for play, which is one you're gonna do an awful lot of time, is the big space bar. So it's a very easy one to remember. Space bar will start it playing. David, and it will stop it. So anyway, I want to look at this footage. I could sit here and play it and wait while we faff around and get ready for filming. Or what I could do is jog through it a lot faster. Now what I prefer to do is I'll get it roughly in the right place and then refine it. And I get it roughly in the right place by coming here and grabbing this little icon, which is the thing we call the playhead, and start dragging it around. If you look at this rectangular bar here, this represents the entire clip. That's the start and the end. So if I drag that to the start and then drag that to the end, I'm shooting through the clip at high speed. So that means I can come through here and basically it's about here is where we actually get to the take where we get it right. So I want to start the entire edit with Ringo slightly off the screen. You can see there I've got the playhead roughly in the right place. I've got Ringo's hand wobbling slightly here in the corner. There's ways where you can make sure this is a completely static display, but we'll talk about that in the configuration section. But basically I can see Ringo's hand just popping in. I want to start with Ringo's hand completely off. Now I could try grabbing with the playhead, but it's quite hard to get it exactly right. So I'll put it roughly in the right place and then I'll use these keys here to go one frame backwards or one frame forwards. Again, if you can remember the keyboard shortcut, it's the left and right arrow keys. I use lots of keyboard shortcuts when I'm using EDIUS. If you're not gonna remember many of them, the ones to remember are things like the space bar, the left and right arrow keys. There we are, I've got that so Ringo's hand's completely off the screen. So that's where I want the shot to start. So I've got to mark that as the starting or the in point. Now you can see around the player window here, I've got quite a few different icons. I won't bother to go through all of them right now but particularly I'm heading towards these two. You'll notice as I hang over that icon, it pops up with what's called a tooltip saying set in point. And then in brackets, there's an eye. That's telling me that that is the thing that sets the in point. Hang over that one and it'll say, oh, that's the thing that sets the out point. The thing in brackets, in other words, in this case, the O that's in brackets, or in this case, the I that's in brackets is the keyboard shortcut. So to set an in point, I can either click on that or I can press the I key on the keyboard. That's where I want it to start. Now let's just play it. And at that point, just after Ringo sat down, I'm then going to cut to a close up. So let's just move it back a little bit. And he says, David. David, he says. That's where I want it to end. Now I'm not gonna get it exactly right here. I'm going to refine it when I've got it on the timeline. I'm getting it roughly right. So I've got that as the starting point. I wanna mark that as the ending point. So you come over to this button and you hit the button to mark an out point or press the O key. Now you can see I've got the entire length of the clip there. And in the middle, 
a little shaded section which is the section I'm about to use. You'll also notice there's a display up here. I'm going to pop into the preferences and make that a little bit bigger. This display here is showing me basically where I am in the clip and as I drag it through you can see the audio levels popping up and down. There's ways where you can change what that information is, you can make it the date and time you actually film the stuff, there's ways where you can turn it all off. Again, talk about that in a different section. Now I've just isolated the bit I want to use, I then want to drag that and put it into my edit. Now the timeline is the edit. It's like a big film strip, this is the start, the end is, well, wherever it ends. What's the longest timeline we've ever done in Edius? Well, 24 hours we laid on a timeline once and it still kept on going. So kind of your edit can be as long as you like um, and as long as your audience can put up with, really. Anyway, I'm going to start by taking this clip and putting it right at the start of the edit. So I'm just going to grab hold of it. I'm going to stick my mouse up here, hold down on the left mouse wheel, drag and drop it. And I've popped it onto the timeline right at the start. Looking at the timeline, you can see you've got different tracks. This one here has got a V on it. This one's got a V and an A. There's a T track and there's some different audio tracks or A tracks. This is a track where you could just put video. This is a track where you put video and audio together. This is a title track. This is separate audio tracks. Edius has started with this number of tracks because that's what's in my settings. But I could say, oh, I want to start with 10 tracks or 15 tracks or whatever. You can reorganize that. I can add more tracks in. If I felt more like more video tracks, you right click and say add and put some more in. I'm not going to do any of that yet. I just really want to put one thing after the other. So literally, I've dragged that clip, put it down onto the timeline, press the play button, and there we are. Ringo walks in and sits down. It's my first bit of the edit. You might ask what all these yellow bits and green bits are around here. That yellow bit up there represents the picture. These green sections represent the sound. I'll come on to why there's actually three different sound sections here for this clip later on. Right now I want to get on and lay out the rough edit because I want to tweak it afterwards. So I've got the start. The next thing I want to do is cut to a close-up of Ringo. I'm going to come back over here to the project window and you can see I've got various shots. I happen to know that that is the shot that I want to use of Ringo. What we did is we filmed the wide shot, then we did all the close-ups on Ringo and then all the close-ups on me. Pretty standard way of filming. Now I want to come through and find the section where Ringo says David, I wanted to ask you about ABCHD. Because that's the follow-on shot from him sitting down. So I'm going to get it roughly in the right place, which is about there. Maybe use the one frame forward and one frame backwards to try and tart it up, but don't worry, I'll, I'll sort it out later on. And I'm going to click on that and make it the end point. Watch it. David, I wanted to ask you about ABCHD. How easy is it to edit? And then mark that as the end of that first line of his. And then I'm going to drag that and pop it onto the timeline. Again, left mouse button, drag it and drop it. And I've put it straight after the first clip. Now I've got an edit. Ringo sits down David. David. and then says something. Not a perfect edit, I need to tweak it a bit later on. But basically, there we are, that's an edit, two clips, one after the other. The rest of this edit is basically, I reply, he replies, I reply, he replies. So let's get my reply to him. Happen to know it's this shot, so double click on it, put it up in the source. Find where I start my reply, roughly. Well, it's pretty easy to edit the stuff these days. As long as you've got an up-to-date computer and the right editing program, you just put it into the program and edit it. Click on this, mark the ending point, that's my reply. Drag it, shove it after Ringo. Now I've got to go back to Ringo, so let's double click on Ringo and look for his second question. There we are, second question. So I've got it roughly to the right place. Press an I to mark an in point. Hang on, why has all this lot got red? What's going on there? Must be something wrong, right? No, all that's happened is I've now marked a new in point on this clip. That's the out point. That's the in point. It's gone red because the out point is before the in point. Of course, the out point should be after the in point. 
Well, I know I'm going to mark a new out point in a second, so I'm going to completely ignore the redness because it'll disappear. Don't panic. Watch it. And Sony and Panasonic cameras, is there a big difference between the footage? Get to the end, mark the out point, drag it and throw it onto the timeline. So you can see I'm now building up a conversation. Ringo, me, Ringo, me. There's another couple of questions. Now, I'm really getting quite bored with taking one and putting it in there, putting another one and putting it in there. What I'm going to do is throw down all of the Ringo questions. And then I'm going to stick my replies in between them. So I've got to go back to the shot of Ringo again. I could come over here and double click on it. Or I could just come up to here where I've got player and recorder and click on player. And you'll find the Ringo shot is still in there. It's still in the source playing thing ready for me to use. So I didn't have to double click on it. I just have to click on that. If I've got both screens up, which is this dual mode that I mentioned earlier on, actually I'll always have the player there and I'll always have the timeline or the recorder there. Because I'm running on a very small amount of space, I'm working in single mode. Sometimes working in dual mode is nicer. Whatever you feel like, just pop it between the two. Anyway, I want to come back and get the other two questions from Ringo. So, no, he listens to my reply. There isn't any more. Most of the programs just seem to take them. And then he says... Wonderful. And uh, what is the best program to edit ABCHD on? There we are. So I marked an in point at the start, mark an out point at the end. And I've chosen that bit of conversation. Again, it's pretty rough. If you look very carefully at the end there, he actually looks straight at the camera, which is obviously a big no-no. I'm not too worried that I've accidentally included that. I'll trim it off later on. So I've got that question from him. I'm just going to drag it and stick it after the previous one. Come back to the player. Uh, well, personally, I prefer get his final question. Yep, want it to start there, mark that as the in point. Oh, thank you very much, David. Mark that as the out point, throw it onto the timeline. So I've laid out basically Ringo's three questions. Well, now what I want to do is to put my three replies in the middle. So I could come over to the window and double click on it and put me back into the source. Or another thing I could do, because I've already used a bit of this clip, is I could have come up to file and then recent clip and then you can see there I could have chosen me from there. Either of those would have got this clip back into the source window. But what I want to do is I want to find my reply to Ringo's question about Sony and Panasonic cameras. So let's scoot along and then play that. Again when we first started there was some programs wouldn't take one or the other but these days all the programs just really take the stuff. That's my reply, and I want to take my reply and I want to put it in here. Now, if I drag this and throw it onto the timeline, like that, and let go, you'll notice it will wipe out the other bits of Ringo that I've already put in. I don't want to do that. Now, first of all, I've got to get back, so I've got to undo what I just did. Undoing is something that you're going to use an awful lot when you're learning EDIUS. You'll do something, suddenly realize you made a mistake, and you want to undo it. Undo is this little button here. You'll notice if I hang over it long enough, it says the keyboard shortcut is Control and Z, which is the same keyboard shortcut for undo in just about every Windows program. You'll even notice that there's a little drop down here, which doesn't just let me undo the last one. I, I can pop back several moves, so I can I go back and remove several different things. I don't want to do that, actually. I just want to go here, click on it once, and it undoes that dropping on the timeline. Now I want to go back to the player, and I want to drop that onto the timeline in there and move these two down. And I achieve that very simply by coming over here to what's called the mode bar. This bar here at the top of the tracks is called the mode bar. And I'm going to go for this little icon here. Now it's vaguely possible this little icon on your system will look like that. It's basically two different modes to this little icon. There's overwrite mode and insert mode. When it's in overwrite mode with a little orange triangle, when you drop a clip on the timeline, it wipes out what is ever there. When you're in blue mode, you drop a clip on the timeline, it moves everything else around. 
Now, whether it moves everything on every track or just the stuff on the track you're putting it onto really depends on other settings, these little sync clocks down here. I'll go through that a lot more in the editing section. For now, all I want to do is to pop it into blue mode, come back to the player, grab me, drag me, and drop me just there. So I'm going to drop me in between those two shots of Ringo. And you'll notice what happens when I let go. I go in there and Ringo's moved down. It's exactly what I wanted to do. I'm going to come back to the player and I'm going to look for the next reply. So I start about there. Well, my personal favourite is Grass Valley Edius. I mean, if you get a nice up-to-date computer in Edius, editing ABC HD is pretty much like editing DV footage. I've set the endpoint, click on that, set the out point. And I want to do the same with that. I want to drag that and drop it into the join there between those two clips. Now there's loads of ways of doing that sort of thing. There are little buttons on the source which will do that kind of thing for you. There's all sorts of considerations when you're using the insert and the overwrite modes. Basically, check out the editing section of the tutorial. There'll be an awful lot more on there about this. Which one should you be in all the time? Well, personally, I prefer to be in overwrite mode all the time. The trouble with insert mode is that it depends on how you've got it set up, but when you stick in clips in different places, it could move around clips that you don't want to move around. So I like to go into insert mode when I'm ready, when I want to do some inserting. I actively choose it, it gets my brain into insert mode and I know what I'm doing. If I'm in overwrite mode, nothing moves at all, so I know that uh, nothing's going to shuffle around without me knowing it. So I like to be in overwrite mode all the time. There's even a preference where you can set that to be the way you like it all the time. If you've got a system from us, then it'll be in overwrite mode as default. If you've just installed the software on your own, it'll probably be in insert mode as a default. Anyway, I'm going to put it back to overwrite mode. But there you are, I've got an edit. You can see by looking at the ruler along the top here, it's only about 40 seconds long. You can even tell from the on-screen display here, it's actually 43 seconds and 7 frames. There's 25 frames in a second, so you know that's about 43 and a half seconds long for my edit. It's a bit rough. I can move up and down by grabbing hold of this little bar and move from the end to the start. I can also use this thing up here to zoom in and out so I can get in a lot closer or further away. I can even click on this little thing here and it'll make it fit for me. There's loads of different ways of getting around on the timeline, but basically I've got an edit. So we come in and sit down, Ringo asks me a question, I reply and so on. Trouble is the joins are all a bit rough. David. He says David, David twice, he looks at the camera. In fact, in this case, he sits down, he's still sitting as he says David but we didn't film it that way for the second shot, so I've got to tidy up that. So now I want to go through and tidy up all the edits.